Good morning, welcome to Frank's School. This is the sixth year, 62nd day, first video. And uh, stuff is crazy uh, at the moment, kind of in my head. So I decided maybe I'll explain this or write it down or organize my thoughts. Kat's going to help me in a minute. What's going on here at Frank's School? I, it, it'll probably help me a little bit if I could list this stuff. Well, first of all, a woman named Lydia Burt has, has done some work for me. Come here, Kat. Kat? Uh, and, uh, well, she didn't do it for me, but she did it about me. Uh, she works for the Arizona Republic, and, and she had questions and uh, sort of interviewed me is what it amounted to. And that took some time and some thought, and the result was a profile, which is online. And a story is coming soon, which is not online yet, but any day it'll be there. And I'll give you the link uh, at the end of this uh, video for the profile, at least, if you want to see it. It's only a minute and a half long. And, but one of the things that I was saying, if this all of a sudden gives me a lot of exposure, which it could, then maybe I'll, I'm thinking about starting a gloss, that is a commentary, sort of, on my school from the beginning, from, from the first year, first uh, day, first video, and it's in, a, in a sense attend my own school. But then if, if I have anything to add or improvements or corrections or something, I give it as a gloss. I'm, I'm thinking about doing that. I could really use at this point a chance to look back at where I have been because in a way I've just been kind of teaching all out for six years. Uh, it would help me sort it out. I often refer to Ariadne's string as a way to keep from losing your mind. So that's one thing. <clears throat> the three-legged windmill down there by the road. Well, uh, I'm spending a time on that. It's really fun. Uh, that's going to result in a windmill series that I'm going to teach about windmills. Like I taught about water wheels. The thing is, I knew a lot about water wheels already. Windmills are kind of new to me. I know a bunch about them, but as I say, they're, they're kind of new to me. In a lot of ways, they're harder. Uh, uh, my neighbor who works with me uh, pretty often. His ingenuity is helping here a little bit because I don't want to just make a, like a little toy windmill. I want to make a, a functioning windmill. But but cloth sailed and, and, and it, I, I never spend very much money on what I build because <clears throat> I don't have it. Also I think it's maybe more interesting to people who they don't have money either but maybe they could do it. Uh, so anyway that's going on. Uh, and, and that, that series, I'm going to pick it up here real soon. I want to talk about a new vernacular architecture. Vernacular means architecture of, sort of of the people, of the common people. And in a sense, that's also an oxymoron. How can you have a new vernacular architecture? Well, I think I have discovered things about building that c could amount to a new vernacular architecture. And an example of it <clears throat> is going to be the uh, three-legged windmill. It's right down close to the road. And I'll leave it open. <clears throat> I won't fill the walls in. So the framing of it will be evident to people driving by. They can stop and they can study. If they want to, they can study in detail. How I put the roof on, I think especially, is, is going to be something they've never seen before. But, but last year, I figured that out. And, and I sort of I want to do that. Uh, so that that's going to go on, and I'll 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 I may go into quite a bit of detail against uh, again about this kind of building uh, when the time is right, and 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 a result of it is what I'm going to call huts for homes and hope. Three H, like there's a four H club, huts for homes and hopes, hope. I'm uh you know I'm I'm going to show how I build these huts for about three hundred dollars. Uh, that's probably reasonable. I mean, there's a lot of work involved, but for $300, I can build a hut that, that would house uh, a family. I mean, it's a, only 96 square feet. It's really small. It's a hut. It's not really a home. You can compare that to Habitat for Humanity, which builds a real, well, not a big house, but I mean a sort of a normal house and prepares the residents to become normal American consumers. This is very different. And for another $300, I could build the workshop right there beside it where that family could have employment as uh, immediately with a very small tool kit and they, uh, they could become decommissioners 
of all, all kinds of stuff that comes in. Recyclers, if you want to think of it like that. Well, toward that end, I have the help of Matthew, my sort of apprentice. He's about to go off to school, begin his college career in sustainability studies. And his last couple weeks before he goes to school, he's working with me. And I would really like him to thoroughly, or as much as he can, understand how these huts are built, because I think it, it would be information that, that would be of use to not only himself, but others when he gets to college. So that's going on. Uh, and whenever Matthew's, well, I'm doing that whether Matthew's here or not. The Fraser Mill Timbers. Now, I, I, there's a place that I've given it the name Fraser Mill, where I've got all these timbers from three buildings that, that were torn down. These, I'm talking timbers now. This is timber framing. Timber frame buildings. A, a barn that burnt, a, a, a building that was knocked down and was going to be burnt. Uh, well, actually, two buildings that burnt. Well, anyway, I need to get those timbers down there to on site, close to where they're gonna. I'm going to use them because once the winter comes, if they get frozen to the ground, uh, th then I'll just have to wait. So that's going on, uh, and still waiting. Well, you know, still waiting there for things I need to get to is is roofs. I've got a lot of roofs I have to repair, but the way I'm repairing the roofs is actually getting ready to make them into living roofs. Uh, which, again, this is going to be another case of a very steep learning curve because I, I don't know that much about them, but I have ideas. Uh, and, and down there, the three-legged windmill, the little roof on it, there's, there's two roof benches and, uh, and the roofs. I'll make them ready to become living roofs too because when people drive by, they can look at it and if they have a mind to question, they might be, they'll either stop and ask or else they'll figure out what I'm doing. So I've got a lot of roofs to repair. Uh, there's backhoe work to be done. It, uh, uh, probably just a, a, an afternoon. But I want to get a spot ready to build a kiln for uh, like a potter's kiln. I have the fire brick in there in a pile. And like to actually, again, before they freeze solid. And also a, a, a little bit of a conservatory. I'm building a, a hut over the kiln to use the heat from it uh, where I could keep some plants growing that otherwise wouldn't grow. Thomas Hawking Hall, that's the uh, building that has the Shakespearean uh, stage in it. So sorely in need of attention because I, I you know, I have to, at, at, wherever I work it gets cleaner and neater and it really needs that. Hawking Guest House, guest house uh, that, that will be the work of the winter. And it, you know, I, it, it, all this stuff is fun. But this, the pressure won't be on as much there, or there really, except that I need to get it cleaned up. Fencing, always an issue. You know, I'm always working on fencing. My goats are pretty darn good. They don't get out very much. August is a very busy time. Once school starts and the kids go back and things, in a lot of ways, it'll calm down. I don't know for me. That's, there's a lot going on at Frank School. Bye for now.